All right, welcome to Biology 2600 Genetics. So this is a quick recording for those that could not make it to the first class. Um, so just a brief introduction about what the class is about, and then I'll jump right into the syllabus. Um, so this class is jointly taught by two professors. Uh, my name is Dr. Patrick McGrath. Um, you can feel free to call me Patrick and also Dr. Matt Torres. So Matt Torres is going to teach the second half of the class and I will teach the first half of the class on genetic analysis. So why should you study genetics? Um, genetics is actually a really interesting field right now, um, both from the perspective of research and from the perspective of um, human health. So the field of genetics has been undergoing a revolution. Um, what was in past a field for just basic research is now something that directly impacts you in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, most likely, you will have your genome sequenced in your lifetime. This is possible because of the cheap cost of sequencing and the crazy amount of technology development in this area. And because of this, because you have knowledge of your genome, you'll be confronted with medical decisions based upon information encoded within your genome. Um, and then you also have to be worried about ethical issues related to releasing information in your genome um, to commercial companies and what those commercial companies might do with that information that's encoded within your genome. And this is information about your health, but it's also information um, from your relatives as well. Uh, so, like I said, sequencing is cheap. New technologies have made it possible to sequence whole genomes for less than $1,000. Um, this was $1,000 in 2017, and the cost has continued to go down um, since then. Uh, so back in you know, 2002, the human genome was sequenced, and this first human genome cost on the order of billions of dollars. And now, uh, now there are companies that exist um, where you can set out, send out a sample of your DNA and they will give you a pretty good idea um, of your entire DNA genome. So it won't be the entire genome, but it'll be the large majority of it. Uh, you can also, there are also companies that genotype um, common SNVs, small nucleotide variants that uh, segregate within the human population. These are companies like 23andMe and Ancestry, and they can do this for even cheaper amount on the order of, of $100, $200. Um, so at these costs, you will most likely get your genome sequenced at some point for some health reasons um, or just for your own benefit um, if you're interested in Ancestry or, or um, other things. So what does your genome tell you? Um, disease risk, so susceptibility to a large number of rare diseases, for example. Uh, Tay-Sachs disease, sickle cell disease are two um, more common rare diseases. And also common diseases like autism and diabetes are influenced by genetics. So this is an active part of research is to understand and predict your risk to these diseases from your genetic variation. This is not a simple set of you have this this variant, therefore you have a high risk of autism. Um, these diseases have a much more complex genetic basis um, where it seems like hundreds to thousands of genetic variants have a small um, but cumulatively important influence on your risk. Uh, normal traits, so non-disease traits. So identical twins, for example, look alike because genetics plays a, such an important role in how you look. Um, your hair color, your eye color, your shape of your nose, etc. Um, you know, in one day in the future, potentially detectives can predict what sus suspects look like just using a DNA sample. So, if a, if if there is some sort of murder, if there is some sort of crime that is committed, and they leave behind some sort of DNA sample, a piece of hair and this is sequenced, potentially one day we'll be able to predict with pretty high certainty what the individual looks like based upon that DNA. And then now, these days, you can actually do a ton of ancestry, so you can identify who your living relatives are. Um, you might be confronted with things like, are your parents that you think are your biological parents, are they actually your biological parents? Um, so this is not just a possibility. I've, I've had someone come to my lab with confusion over their 23andMe tests. Um, that he and his brother took, and the reason it was confusing was because uh, he and his brother were actually half-brothers and not full brothers. And so this is something that is encoded within your DNA and something that you can't just simply hide. Um, you can also get information about geographical populations, such as countries um, that your ancestors are from, and you know this will also influence your children's traits as well. 
So um, a real life example of someone who made decisions based upon their genome is Angelina Jolie. So Angelina Jolie found out that she had, um, I believe it was an allele of BRCA2. Um, so there are two genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2, that if you have allele, certain risk alleles within them, then you have a very high probability that you're actually going to um, get breast cancer or uterine cancer, you know, sometime in your life. So this is on the order of 60 to 70% by the time you're 70 years old. And so Angelina Jolie had, I believe her mother um, die of, of, of breast cancer. And so, she, and so based upon this family history, she tested these genes and found out that she carried that risk variant. And so she actually underwent a voluntary mastectomy and hysterectomy because her genotype told her that she would have a high risk of developing cancer in these tissues um, at some point in her life. So she simply removed those tissues from her body to, to um, reduce that risk. Um, and so Myriad, for example, is a company that actually can do this sort of testing either on specific genes or now they offer whole panels of genes as well. Um, ancestry, so what will your genome tell you? So one of the things that it tells you is information about not only yourself, but also of your relatives. And so detectives have actually used that in order to crack a cold case um, using DNA from uh, a crime scene uh, from a, a serial killer known as the Golden State Killer. And this individual, um, Joseph D'Angelo, never actually participated in any of these companies like 23andMe, et cetera. He never gave a sample of his DNA to any of his companies, uh, but unfortunately for him, one of his relatives did. And so because one of his relatives did, they could take that DNA sample from his body, they could match it with that database, and they could, and they could identify relatives um, to this individual. And so they knew that the the DNA sample from the crime scene was an uncle, for example, of the individual that matched, that is alive, that participated in this. And so they can interview them, identify like their relatives, and eventually they were able to track down this person. And this has become a more common way to actually kind of crack some of these cold cases when you have DNA that doesn't match anyone in a current criminal database. Um, so like I said, this gives you information about your relatives. Um, so me and my brother have done 23andMe, and you can see on the left that uh, we actually are full brothers. Um, so um, this dark purple region means we share uh, both chromosomes um, 100%, and so that is only possible if you have both the same mother and the same father. Um, so this was a bit of a trepidation when we actually shared this data, um, but luckily my parents uh, uh, were telling the truth about us being full brothers. You can also identify distant relatives. So these are second to third cousins. I have no idea who they are. I've never met them, but I could contact them through the 23andMe website, for example. And you can see that we share these small segments of the genome. So the more distant you are related to an individual, the less DNA you actually share with them. So a second and third cousin, you can see there's only a few regions of the genome that you actually share with them. And then finally, um, this is an example from 23andMe of my ancestry. Um, so this matches mostly, of, there are no real surprises here. Um, most of my ancestry is Irish, Patrick McGrath. You know, if you wanted to call me by my proper Irish pronunciation, it would be Patrick McGraw, and, or Patty McGraw if you wanted to. Um, uh, but mo the majority of my ancestry comes from Ireland. And I also have a large amount, a decent amount of German um, uh, as well. I'm not exactly sure what this broadly Northwestern European is, um, but uh, these algorithms are kind of always moving and changing. So uh, sometimes these broadly Northwestern European will eventually be categorized into a much more specific category. Um, so you shouldn't be surprised if these percentages change over time as they tweak their algorithm a bit, and you might be surprised to see how much they, they change. Um, this is actually pretty difficult to really get into the exact ancestry. Um, it's still something that's, that's, that's not, um, you know, not like a perfectly run or perfectly run operation. 
Um, and one day, you might have followed this story from China where a researcher decided to use CRISPR-Cas9 in order to edit specific nucleotides um, within fetuses in order to remove, to actually add certain genetic variants that protect the um, children from HIV. So these were children of parents that were HIV positive, and so he engineered the uh, there are certain known variants that protect from HIV if you have them. So he engineered those into the children to, to make sure that they did not get HIV. Um, but there's all sorts of ethical issues that are obviously associated with this, not only correcting diseases, but potentially you could, you know, add other features as well. You know, if you wanted a baby that had a certain hair color, you know, this is or eye color, you know, these things are actually much more possible now because we're, we're exploring and understanding the genetic basis of some of these traits. Um, you know, so he did this kind of without actually passing this through any sort of ethical board and, you know, the scientific community decided we are definitely not ready to start to start doing CRISPR-Cas9 like this and he ended up being arrested uh, for doing this work. So. This is kind of why I think genetics is a really exciting um, subject right now. And I wanted to just kind of briefly go over some of the ways we are going to learn and then test the material. So again, this is broken up into two halves of the class. So I will be teaching half of the class. Matt Torres will be teaching the other half. Um, and the subject matter is very different. Um, so we've broken up the subject matter to be genetic analysis and then molecular genetics, um, but we have very different styles of teaching. So I just wanna make sure that what I'm covering, what well, you know what I'm covering right now is how I'm going to teach the class. Um, so I like to do this as a flipped classroom um, and, I've, and I've actually expanded this a lot since um, the beginning of COVID-19 um, because I think it's nice for um, all of the lectures to be recorded um, uh, and available for students um, to watch kind of at their own time. So the idea of how you'll learn is that you'll read the textbook um, and also do a lecture and um, uh, you know the textbook can be long so I think what's more important than you should read the textbook if that's how you learn very well, if that's how your preferred way of learning, um, but I'll try to make my lectures pretty detailed that covers a lot of stuff. Um, so most importantly is that you actually watch the lecture before class. Um, I will also assign some mastering genetics homework, um, a small amount of mastering genetics homework that I think will help you understand the material as you're going through the lecture. Um, so there will also be, um, I think most of you are probably familiar with this from intro bio, um, but if not, it's pretty easy to learn this, this what mastering genetics is. Um, class time will be spent during uh, on activities. So each chapter I've designed activities that are designed to help you understand the concepts of, of the material. And so it's really important that you take these activities seriously. Um, these activities will be graded, um, but I also want you to get 100% on these. These are part of the learning process. Um, so you'll also work on groups. So however you feel comfortable in class, how you know up to four or five people can work together, and, um, and if you don't want to work closely with people, that's fine too, you can work by yourself. Um, but it's an opportunity to do this work while you have both me and then the three TAs around to ask questions. So please, please, please take this opportunity to ask questions. If you're confused, if you don't understand it, that's okay. You have the opportunity to ask questions um, to help you understand the material. Um, you can even ask, do I have the right answer? Can you check over my worksheet to make sure that all my answers are correct? That is totally fine. Quizzes, so we also will have quizzes. Um, these will be also solved in groups during class. Um, and these will start to get more difficult. So the purpose of the quizzes is to also prepare you for the types of questions that you'll encounter on the exams. Um, sorry, these are for a grade. This is actually a mistake that I need to need to correct. Um, so the quizzes are for a grade, and oh no, cross that out just to make that sure. The quizzes are for the grade, but they are done in groups. So again, you know, I 
I want you to be exposed to difficult questions, but I also want you to have the opportunity to do these together um, and think through them. Um, each individual will submit their own answers, so if you disagree in your group, that's fine. You can all submit your own, own different answers. And then finally, exams. Um, so this will also include a large amount of your grade. Um, and there are, sorry, four, I did not update this from last semester, there will be four exams during class time. Um, and these will be a combination of multiple choice and free answer. All right. So let's go very quickly through the syllabus. So I am Patrick McGrath. Um, this is my email, Dr. Torres, and we will have office hours and location by appointment. So you can just contact us if you need to, um, if you want to have specific office hours with us. Uh, but your first line of communication should be with our TAs. So we have three excellent TAs, Ling Zhu, Jack Toppin, and Cass Barnhart. And these TAs are also reachable by email and they will be holding specific office hours at these three times and locations. Um, so what's nice about this class is that there's actually a large, a a large amount of different um, office hours um, that you can certainly um, attend with questions. Um, so we are using Klug. Um, and let's see if there's anything important here. So these are kind of the course goals and learning outcomes that we hope you achieve by the end of the class. Um, it's expected that you have taken an intro biology course um, to kind of prepare for this class. And again, the class is taught by two professors um, and the first half on genetic analysis will be taught in a flipped classroom format, which I just covered. Um, Instructor illness, exposure to COVID. So we will be holding in-person class um, throughout the year. So the, the state of Georgia expects us to hold in-person classes and expects us to have in-person classes as the primary mode of, of communication. And so we are following that, that guideline and you know I, I'm happy to be in class. I want things to be as normal as possible. Um, so that's kind of what I prefer as well to have an in-person classroom and get back to and get back to um, in person in person learning. Um, wear masks. Um, you know it's important to continue to wear masks. Um, you never know the situation that students around you are in, um, whether health risks they have and, or health risks that um, people they live with or people they see with a lot have. And so it's important that we all kind of share this responsibility. So um, wear masks to class, um, please participate in surveillance testing and please be mindful of not attending class if you have COVID-19 related symptoms. Um, you know, please test yourself if you do have COVID-19 related systems. Georgia Tech has one of the best testing programs um, in, in, in all the universities. And so please take advantage of that and please help keep, um, help keep the entire class as safe as possible um, while we try to go back to this, you know, much more normal experience to learning. Um, if I have um, an exposure or if I actually contract COVID-19, um, you know, then I potentially will have to quarantine and there will certainly be some disruption to how classes or services are run. Um, we will try to keep the format as normal as possible. So potentially the TAs will be the primary people to run the class. Um, so I would like to keep things as, as, as normal as possible. Um, if this changes, then I will communicate with you how exactly the class operation will change. Um, but because all of the lectures are pre-recorded, that will at least be consistent for during the first half of the semester. Um, if you are, are ill or exposed to COVID-19, um, quarantine. So please do not expose others to COVID-19. And there is an exposure decision tree. Um, let's see if this actually still works. Yes, that still link still works. Um, and you can certainly use that in order to inform your decision. Um, you know, I think if you are not feeling very sick, ideally you should be able to continue to work 
um, during your quarantine. Um, you will be able to continue to work on the activities and potentially the, the quizzes. Um, so just contact us and let us know and we'll figure out some sort of solution. Um, and potentially we can either figure out, we can also connect you if, if you are willing and if you desire um, to other people that might be quarantining if you wanna work together virtually um, on the activities together. Um, Care Center, Counseling Center, Stamps Health Services, and the Student Center. Um, you know, there's a lot of, 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 you know, these are very anxious times. Um, this is, this past two years has created a lot of stress on individuals. Um, so I always like to take a moment just to encourage you to, to keep your, to take your mental health seriously and, you know, to be mindful that there are a lot of, of resources here at Georgia Tech um, to, to help you if you think that you do need help. Um, the Office of Disability Services. So um, it's important that if you have either higher risk for severe illness or and COVID-19 and you require some sort of additional accommodations, um, or if you have other um, disabilities, um, register through the Office of Disability Services. They send me an email that kind of details all of the needs that you have, and you know we are we are definitely happy to follow kind of all of those guidelines. Um, exams will be taken in person during normal class time. So waiting, um, so there will be a total of 28% of the grade will be determined by your activities, your homeworks, and your quizzes. Um, this will be throughout the semester and this will account for a total of 28% of your grade. Um, there will be four exams. Two of the exams will cover the material I teach. Two of the exams will cover the material that Dr. Torres teaches, um, and they will each account for 18%. So all four of these exams will count towards your grade. The final exam will not be cumulative. Um, it will be held, though, during the final exam time period. Um, so activities and homework um, and quizzes and exams. So. Um, we are using learning catalytics and mastering genetics. So again, hopefully you are familiar with this from, from previous classes, um, but uh, we, this is accessible through Canvas and you can, um, uh, uh, you will access this through Canvas and um, you can purchase access the library. What's, what's listed in the library is a bundle that includes both the textbook, the Klug te textbook, um, the uh, learning catalytics and the mastering genetics. So the quizzes will be handled through learning catalytics and then the homework will be mastering genetics. Uh, the most stringent scale used for grading will be the following, um, but potentially we will also, uh, we will also curve the class. So the curve is subject to adjustment at the professor's discretion discretion, um, but kind of the way this works is that the curve is handled at the end of class. So I will try to give you an idea of kind of the distribution of, of scores during the, um, during the exams, but it's important to note that this is just kind of a loose guideline and the only reason I really give it is is for for students to decide whether or not they want to drop the class or not um, the curve is decided at the end you know if, if the students do really poorly on one exam and they do really well on the other exam then it might not be necessary to actually curve the curve the class um, Klug is the course text um, and then there might be some additional materials or resources, but these will all be um, uploaded through the Canvas website. Um, academic integrity, do not cheat. Um, you know, the, we encourage group work. So group work is definitely um, part of what I think is important for the learning process. Um, but, you know, for exams especially, um, do not cheat. Um, if I suspect you of cheating or plagiarizing, um, then I definitely will report you to the Office of Student Integrity. Um, attendance or participation is not strictly required, but um, quizzes, for example, are in person. So if you want credit for the quizzes when we give quizzes, and I'll, and I'll announce ahead of time when the quizzes are, these are not gonna be pop quizzes, um, you will need to attend class in order to take the quizzes um, and then to participate in the group activities. Um, students that participate in the group activities always do much better on the course. So, you know, it's important that you come to class in order to participate in that. 
Um, there's no credit given, so I've already talked about the group work. Um, there's no credit given for any assignments um, turned in after the deadline. Um, if you have any sort of approved institute activities, religious observances, um, those will be all excused for, for any missed credits. Um, please just contact me ahead of time. Um, you know, it's always important to contact me ahead of time versus after the fact um, if you want um, to take advantage of this. Um, regrades, um, so you need to bring laptops. Um, actually, you don't need to, but um, it's actually, in this day and age, we probably will not print out, um, I'm not sure if we'll actually print out hard copies, um, but uh, please bring your laptops and tablets, you know, if you want to use these, if those are helpful to work on. Um, these are useful to look up information, so it's fine to look up information while you work on the activities and kind of go over um, the material from the class. Um, Regrade policy, so if you have issues with your grades, um, the important thing is um, I need an email that kind of documents exactly what you think the problem is and they can be requested for kind of the four following reasons. Um, but most important is that the deadlines for the submission of regrades will be one week after the grade is returned to the students. So it's not okay to wait until the end of the class and realize that you're close to a different grade and then send me all of these regrade requests um, for things that you're hoping to kind of have modify your grade. So you, if you really think that there's an issue with your, with your score, you need to be prompt about requesting a regrade um, to one week after you receive the, the grade back. Um, a bunch of resources um, that could that potentially will be useful to you. I also include in the syllabus, and then finally the schedule. So again, the first two, uh, the first half of the class. Sorry, I'm not sure what this typo is either. The first half of the class will be spent on genetic analysis. So these are the chapters that we will teach. Um, I will be teaching the first half. PM just indicates Patrick McGrath, and then Matt Torres will be teaching the second half of the class. Um, so we will be teaching, covering chapter two, three, four, six, and then we'll have our first exam on that material, and then chapter five and 26. So these are much more difficult chapters that we like to spend a lot of time on um, because they are also really important for understanding things like ancestry um, and also um, kind of genetic diversity and how it, how it is um, generated. Um, so we're gonna spend a full three classes on each of these chapters. This. Um, is also subject to change, so sometimes it takes longer than we expect to cover material from this chapter, um, so we will update with, with new syllabus um, schedules um, as necessary. All right, so that covers most of it. So there's also a handout that um, helps you uh, um, log in to Mastering Genetics and Learning Catalytics. Um, so this handout will help you if you haven't done it before. And then finally, I will also um, this is the Canvas website. Um, so my lab and mastering is where you will actually um, access the mastering and learning catalytics. And then, um, as I said, the lectures are posted ahead of time. So chapter two, which we'll cover on Thursday. Um, so those lectures um, can be found on YouTube. And so um, I break these lectures up into small sections and then those I create a playlist out of. Um, so these are the four lectures um, for chapter two. So you can watch those ahead of time. And the, um, this is where you'll also find a PDF of the, of the lecture for the class. All right, so hopefully that answers all of your questions on the start of the class, and I will um, see you on Thursday.